uh, figure 6.1 shows a coil of wire connected by flexible leads to a switch and a battery. This is the battery over here, this is the switch, this is the coil, and these are the flexible leads. Okay. The coil is placed between the poles of a permanent magnet and is free to turn about the axis. When the switch is closed, forces due to the current X on the sides of the coil, the coil starts to turn. On figure 6.1, draw arrows to show the direction of the forces. So we need to draw the direction of the forces on the two sides of the coil. So how do we find the direction of the force acting on the coil? The answer is we find it by using Fleming's left hand rule. And for the Fleming's left hand rule, your forefinger or the first finger has to be in the direction of field. The second finger or the middle finger has to be in the direction of current. And lastly, your thumb would point in the direction of force. So you need to find where your thumb would be pointing at if your forefinger is aligned in the direction of field and your second finger is aligned in the direction of current and we ensure that we, we stretch the three fingers in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. Now first of all the direction of current is also given for both sides. Let's talk about the right side of the coil first. The right side means the side towards the south pole. If you follow the conventional current, the direction of current is from positive towards the negative. So it would be like this if we track the direction of current all the way. So at this side of the coil, the current is uh, inwards. All right, so it's kind of a 3D shape. Let's see you're uh, looking it from the front, from here. You're looking from here. From this side, from this angle, the current would appear to go inward. Now what would be the direction of force you got to use the right hand rule, sorry, the left hand rule and let me know what the direction of force comes out to be if the current is inward and the magnetic field is from left to right because magnetic field is always from north towards the south. It is downward, very good. So on this side of the coil, the force would appear to be downward. Do we need to mark it? No. Yeah, we can just write force here, F. And for the second one, you don't even need to apply the left hand rule because you realize that the direction of current for that one is outward. If you're looking through here, from this side, from this angle, the direction of current would be towards you, outward. So the direction of force would automatically be reversed. And if it, it was uh, downward for the right side, it would be upward for the left side. over here it'll be upward and you just uh, try to ensure you draw pretty much the same uh, you draw the two arrows of pretty much the same length because these two forces are equal <coughs> uh, 
all right so done with the first part the coil stops when it is vertical explain why turning effect of the forces is zero at this position when the coil is vertical they're saying the turning effect of force at this position or the moment of force is zero and where did we do that let's go over here this one torque is zero or the moment of force is zero or the turning effect of force is zero at the vertical position of the coil why for the check it was this reason since the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the line of force is zero so the line of force is actually passing through the pivot through the axis of rotation So when the coil is vertical, the upward force would be passing through here. The downward force would also be passing through here. But there would be zero perpendicular distance between the forces and the dotted line. Dotted line means the axis of rotation or the pivot. So the simple answer is perpendicular distance. between yeah so perpendicular distance distance between line of forces and the axis of rotation is zero you see how they write this answer no distance between the forces or forces through axle pivot yeah this the same thing all right moving on to the next one in order for the coil to rotate continuously a split ring commuter is connected between the battery and the coil this is what we studied when we we're discussing the uh, construction or the components of the DC motor. Explain how split ring commutator enables the coil to rotate continuously. Include a diagram in your answer. And this one is for the four marks. So first of all, we need to draw a diagram and we need to come up with the explanation. What is the explanation? We already discussed that. So I'm going to quickly move on towards the diagram par part first.
all right so this is a circuit representing the DC motor and this part is the split ring commutator split ring All right. So, split ring commutators we had to show, and now we have to explain how does the split ring commutator help the coil to rotate in the single direction. So, what we had written previously, after every half cycle or after every 180 degrees of rotation in a circle they are total of uh, in a full circle they are total of 360 degrees so when I say after half cycle or half rotation in terms of angle it would mean 180 degrees So for, yeah. after every half cycle of rotation after every half cycle of rotation the commutators reverse the direction of current on each side of the coil hence the coil near North Pole always rotate in one direction and so does the uh, hence not uh, not coil the end of the coil coil end near the north pole always rotate in one direction and so does the end near south pole 